Hi there Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good day To all who is watching this video My name is Abdul Halim bin Hashim I'm from the Faculty of Cognitive Sciences and Human Development Of the University of Malaysia Sarawak I'm going to talk about the topic How to engage workers in risk assessment training using gamification. If you have a LinkedIn account, do follow me on LinkedIn by typing my name there, Abdul Halim Hashim Grad Ayosh, and click the follow button. And also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I talk about uh, contents related to occupational safety and health. When we want our workers to know how to do risk assessment, the first thing that comes into our mind is to conduct a training session. And of course, when we conduct the training session, we usually stick to the traditional ways. Traditional ways, uh, that is the spray and pray technique. Okay, we, we would expect our participant to sit in their chairs yeah, and then listen uh, to the things that we want to talk about, uh, especially about the risk assessment in the class. Like in the slides there, yeah, in the screen you can see, these are the traditional ways where we can find the trainer. Yes doodling something on the whiteboard and the participant would sit down and listen and sometimes when you are too too focused on explaining a concept or a method using your whiteboard we tend to forget that our participant is actually sleeping okay or maybe becoming a zombie and they sit there and they watch you but actually their mind is wandering somewhere else so how do you want to increase the engagement so that's our topic today that i want to share let's gamify yeah let's gamify this term might be new to you gamification Except for those who are hardcore gamers, eh? when you are young, you know, you always want to uh, play games. Eh? These are different concepts, uh, games and gamification. Although it is similar, but there are, it is a different approach. Eh? We are not creating games here as part of the learning process. We are gamifying. We want to gamify the learning process of the participant. So, what's a gamification? Gamification is the application of game design elements and game principles in non-game non contexts. Okay? Like, Training. Eh? Training is not exactly a game. Okay. But you can apply the game mechanics and the, the game elements. Not turning the training into a game. Eh? No. You run the usual process of training, but you just embed some game elements into the process. Gamification can also be defined as a set of activities and processes to solve problems by using or applying the characteristic of game elements. For example, if you give a task, yeah, you give them a piece of paper and within that piece of paper is a case, for example. So it's just a black and white paper containing text telling you about a story and then you ask the participant to read it and talk about it. It's kind of boring, you know. Because we always look at 
papers every day and then you ask the participant to solve the case uh, there's a problem in the case yes they might do it but they they will do it in a non-engaged ways okay okay the, the trainer asks us to do this let's do this okay when we come up with one or two solution then that's it we will satisfy the trainer and let's move on okay so why gamification how does it work okay as i said before there are some game mechanics or game principle game design eh, that you can embed eh, within your training program for risk assessment eh, in this context so some of the game elements as you can see in the screen now whereby the participant can can earn points and scores and then receive reward for the task that they have completed and they have the sense of overcoming challenges and unlock new levels for example and these are the things activities that can get the uh, the human brain excited uh, because as a human our brain is hardwired to play games eh? children play games all the time even adult play games but not as often as children Adults sometimes play serious games you know, like chess. So when you when you do something that is different, it gets the brain excited. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, there's come reward. There's this. There's a uh, challenges. Uh, there's a uh, uh, if I do this, then I will unlock something else, and I can earn scores, right? So when when the brain looks at this something new and exciting, so they get excited. And as a result, the brain will release dopamine, a hormone eh, for happiness, making us feel good, motivated, and we want to chase for more, to solve more challenges and earn more rewards. And this is how gamification works. So when your brain gets excited, we hope that you also, the participant will also be more engaged. Let's look at some of the game mechanics. These are some of the game mechanics that you can embed. Uh, scores, ranks or levels, badges or trophies, tasks for teams, tasks for individual, unlocks, visualize dashboard or progress bar, virtual currency, avatars, individual profiles, and leaderboards the game mechanics is not limited to what I shared in the screen there are also others and it depends on which element is suitable for the program that you want to design and I have been using game mechanics in my a course eh, occupational safety and health at university of malaysia sarawak for quite number of years i think around two or three years already and these are some of the um, important elements eh, within that design and let's look at each of these eh, how do we how do we use this uh, to have to embed gamification in our risk assessment training but before we move on to that please remember gamification does not motivate workers automatically into being interested into doing risk assessment okay gamification is just to increase their level of participation and also engagement they are more into it and by doing that we hopefully that the content gets into the the the, uh, the the content of your training will stick uh, inside inside the mind and inside the heart 
those who are not motivated don't have any care to do anything which means like games and not all people wants to, to wants to play games not all people are excited to play games okay we cannot use gamification to draw people to like risk assessment that's the thing okay gamification can be used to increase the curiosity the engagement of the participant into learning risk assessment so gamification will only help those who are already have some hint of motivation if the participant is not motivated at all if if the participant believe this is not important to him her or this is something that is a waste of time then usually it's quite challenging to get them on board but sometimes sometimes eh, sometimes when they get involved into the the game game gaming experience they might change we don't know okay we we want to try we need to try and it also involve a lot of effort from the trainer part okay this is also important the the trainer also must be must want it eh? you must want it you must be passionate you must want to put the effort into putting gamification eh? because it involves a lot of effort okay the usual stuff the old way of doing things you just stand there and just talk 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 for hours you right and then you play the powerpoint slides and then you just point to the to the slides that is simple yeah that is simple so if you are not ready to be even the trainer also have to be more engaged eh? if you are not ready to be engaged into challenging activities then you are not ready for gamification okay So let's look at some setting up. Okay, for gamific to gamify risk assessment training, we need to do a lot of ground preparation before we conduct in a classroom or online or remotely. Number one, change those boring terminology. Okay, we usually okay. This is the trainer. No change. Because we are, we want to gamify. So trainer change it to game master, or any other terminology that you like. Okay, for my OSH course at University of Malaysia Sarawak, I call myself the master. So I tell my student, don't call me sir, don't call me lecturer, don't call me. Uh, whatever it is that they used to call their lecturer before this you call me the master so since if you want to design gamification into your training program then change what participants but what participant refer you as okay this is just an example a uh, game master okay don't call your participant participant anymore tell them you are not participant you are now a player okay player or you can use other um, terminology that you like eh? this is something that must connect with you eh? something that you like my students you know i don't call, call them my students within the context of the game eh? within the context of the course when whenever i send a message to my students i always call them a player you you play this game well you are a good player or you can use other terminology as well for example you are a guild members eh? for example because when i was young i i'm i'm quite a high, hardcore gamers <laughs> whereby i like to play uh role playing games eh? that involves mission adventures magic uh, like uh, warcraft so uh, i like to use this kind of terminology it brings me a little bit of excitement so you are 
you are not participant anymore you are uh, a guild members you are an acolyte yeah? you're not participant anymore when you ask your participant to do certain tasks don't call it a task change it into mission okay you say okay i'm going to i'm after this we're going to have an a, a, a classroom exercise no that's the boring old terminology change it okay now you are a player we have a mission and within this mission we have a different level of quest for you to complete the mission you need to achieve or complete a number of quests and the participant will go wow now this is different this is kind of exciting it sounds interesting what is our mission master oh, for example so they they the the participant will, although some of the adults I, I i met they like to play games too although you know older adults may be embarrassed to be part of the game but if you always look at if you observe uh, team building session uh, team building training you often find find that adults actually enjoy playing all this kind of games but you have to suit it and uh, not like a childish game okay coming back to the slide <coughs> Task, don't call it task, change it to mission or quest and don't call it exercise anymore. And when you complete a task or exercise, okay, don't call it, okay, you've done it, you complete it, no, change it. Okay, now you have unlocked, you are level up, you have level up. That's a different terminology. And gets the brain excited. Okay. And then find out other terminology that you always use inside your training program and change it. For example, take a break. And we're going to have a five-minute break. Change it into something else. And something that is um, game-like. Uh, game -like. There's a lot of references inside the Google. You just look for it in, the, in Google. You might find and just choose whichever terminology that you like. But don't overdo it. I don't put in terminology that uh, it's quite difficult for them to pronounce. Eh? Uh, use something that is simple for them to remember and to pronounce. Okay, in any gamification, in any games, one of the most important thing is the story. Eh? That's why a lot of people who play computer games... Eh? They are hooked to it eh, because there's a story behind it. Okay, you start off with somewhere, you know, you are stranded in an island. Okay, your mission is to uh, escape from the island and go somewhere else where you need to be. And along the way, there will be a lot of things that you have to do. Okay, and there's a backstory to it. Okay, you meet this person or oh, who is this person it's like watching a movie okay and a lot of times people are hooked to computer games they can that can they can play like seven or eight hours straight it's because they are part of the story yeah? they are part of the story they feel that they have a purpose inside the game and they have something that they need to do and it's important to them and that's why they are hooked this is something that we want to, de to do in our training program. We want to hit, hook them, yeah? so that they can, they, 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 so, so that they feel the time flies away yeah? when they participate in your training program, especially for risk assessment. It's, it's not uh, something that you know time goes slowly when they are participating in your training program, and I always ask, okay. Mr. When will be our when will our break? When when can we have our break? Okay. When will be our what time is our lunch? They always ask for that. That means they are boring. Eh? They are boring. They are not hooked. Eh? If you are hooked, you feel that the time pass away so fast. Eh? The time flies. It's not enough. 
right? So you might want to start by setting up the storyline. Okay, this is something that I share that I use with my students to set up the scene. Um, well, it depends on what, how complicated the story you want to be. That requires a lot of creativity. Uh, for a start, I use a simple storyline, and this is my mission story there. So, at the start of the semester, my student, when they start doing this assignment, they will read this, okay, this is your mission. The master, which is me, is currently struggling to contain hazard critters. Usually, when we train people about risk assessment and hazard, we call them hazard. But because hazard is something that is sometimes difficult to see, yeah, like electricity, so I change it to something physical. Uh, with a different terminology yeah? instead of hazard i use hazard critters the master is cur currently struggling to contain hazard critters from destroying the realm of unimas sierra it's actually unimas but i change it into a more uh, mythical name uh, or more magical name uh, unimas sierra the hazard critters are most of the time hidden in disguise and preparing to attack. Okay. This is true actually because we have hazards at the workplace. And most of the time people are not aware of the hazard. And some of the hazards literally is hidden. You cannot see it with your naked eyes. So what I prepare for the mission story actually relates to the reality. But it is written in a way that is different. Huh? It's more uh, fantasy type narration. So there's a problem there. In the realm of Unima Sierra, there are a lot of hazard critters. And most of the time, you cannot find it or it's hidden, it's hiding. And at any point of time, the hazard can attack. That is the same like accident, eh, accident. So you don't know where is the hazard and you don't know when you will be involved in an accident. So that is a problem. So what is the mission? The mission will be the master, which is me need your help okay your help which is the participant the player or the guild members the the apprentice whatever you want to call, call them to seek uh, these hazard critters study them study is the hazard identification and also assessment of its risk and put barriers around them In the fantasy world, we would imagine that hazard critters is something that is like a monster and we want to put them in a cage. Yeah? <clears throat> so that you won't harm people. Same like hazard. So put barriers around them. This is um, uh, risk control yeah, measures. So that it will never have the ch chance to come out and devour human beings in the realm of Unima Sierra. So, this is the mission story. And it relates to the objective of risk assessment. Albeit in a different way of narration that excite people to read it. It's not just like this, the, the same old things, you know. Okay, you need to identify a hazard and then you have to assess its risk and then you have to control it. It's kind of boring terminology that you always hear about it every day. So if you present them to something that is different, you might, what? Wow, what is this? Sounds different. Yeah? They might get excited and want to know more, be curious, okay, what's in store for them. For those seasoned trainers or experienced trainers, they include... 
So you have the mission. Okay. Now the players have a purpose. Which is, to them, it's a bit different. To us, the trainer is actually a risk assessment. But the players now is able to go into a different world. And they might get excited with that. Now they have a mission. When I come into a classroom, for example, my mission is just to, you know, get as much knowledge as I can. So that is typical, that is normal. But when I go into a classroom and the trainer says, you have a mission, and this is your mission. What? What? You know, it's different from what I always have in my mind to gain knowledge. Now I have a different mission. I have to do this. What's this? I have to read it, understand it, ask the trainer, the master, what is it? Uh, I'm anticipating what are the next things that I need to do. Now, the next thing is setting up the quest. <clears throat> okay, We have a mission, the purpose. Now, to achieve the purpose, we need to have a set of tasks or exercise or activities that the players need to go through. And this usually depends on the trainer. But I'm sharing what I did for the past couple of years. Uh, the activities that I changed to quest that involves um, the process that the students need to go in order to learn about the risk assessment process. So I <clears throat> I created five quests. And this is a quest that relates to risk assessment. Quest number one. The players need to do online quizzes that I prepared or you can also put it as uh, an activity. For example, the players need to attend online class. This is important for Quest 1 because it's established based understanding of risk assessment and its method. And we don't want them to, for the first quest, just do. Okay? And some of the participants might have zero knowledge on what to do. So suddenly they, want, they, they have to do things. And that can be demotivating to some. Eh? Because, okay, what I'm going to do, I don't know I need anything. So the first quest will always related to <coughs> learning stuff first. Eh? Before doing it, you have to learn the underpinning knowledge. So it's either the participant do virtual activities or um, they attend online class within this MCO climate or in the future if you have we can you can all or you can uh, establish a face-to-face -face classroom <coughs> okay you can collect their attendance and to ensure that everyone listen eh, to your explanation in order to complete the first quest for the online quizzes, you can put in like 10 or 20 questions. And <clears throat> the condition for completing quest 1, for example, you must get 100%. You must score all correct. Okay. Now, that is important because for a quest to finish, it must be perfect. Okay. Don't allow participant to complete a quest by doing minimally, eh, minimal. You need to say out of 20 quiz, you know, you can you answer one or two quiz and then you can move on to the next level. No, that, that beats the purpose eh, because we want them to to <coughs> remember eh, the the concept, the methods, eh, the terminology through that activities. That is quest one. And that is very important because you need to tell them about risk assessment first. Quest number two. 
Okay, I find that when you just talk about hazard, the participant usually don't know. <laughs> they, 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 they don't get it. Yeah? Because you know, hazard is something that is crossing a lot of fields, you know. Some hazards are engineering, chemical, you know, there's a lot of hazard they need to remember. So they might remember the definition, but when they see a hazard, they cannot recognize it. Yeah? So to me, the best way to learn about hazard is to do a practical. You need to go out there and look around you and try to identify around you whether there is a hazard or not. And it is best done doing practical. Yeah? But of course, you need to, to tell about the hazard first in quest 1. Okay? Maybe the category of hazards. <clears throat> and then uh, some example of hazards. And to test that, if they need to do practical, that's in the quest 2. Okay? You are now already completed quest 1. You already know what are some of the example of mechanical hazard, for example, chemical hazard, you know some example of uh, biomechanical hazard you know some example of <coughs> of physical hazard now i want to test your understanding by going out there and find me a hazard that's quest 2 practical on site now this can be done outside the classroom it's not something that you can do in classroom because in classroom you it's, it's not ideal yeah? it's not ideal although if you put in pictures of a lot of hazards you know it might not reflect the reality of the participant so from my point of view I like reality okay? it's something that they can see with their own eyes and maybe they can touch if it's safe to do okay and they can analyze and eh, they can observe eh. so quest 2 involves identifying hazard that is the first part of this assessment <clears throat> now quest 3 relates to preparing risk assessment part 1 that is to identify uh, the likelihood and the severity of harm and to identify inherent risk or residual risk you have to identify the existing preventive measures or mitigative measures and at the end of it identifying the risk level that is quest 3 so a lot of terminology within this quest 3 is very important yeah, so that they can relate by doing both activity and thinking yeah, about the concept for example, people are always confused between inherent risk and residual risk. So by doing that activity, okay, practically, hands-on, it might be easier for the participant to understand the concept. Okay, likelihood of occurrences. It is something that quite complex for people to understand about likelihood. <coughs> Yeah. So by doing practical, they know what exactly likelihood involves. What are the things involved in determining likelihood, for example. Um, in doing this at Unimas for my students, I prepared um, an online form. Yeah. Kind, kind of like a guide, especially for Quest 2, 3 and 4. Yeah. <clears throat> because during MCO we cannot guide them face to face so they are at their home around Malaysia so by having this online form they can go, go through step by step process of how to identify hazards step by step process of determining the risk level okay, and step by step process of how to reduce the risk so it's self-learning, it's student-centered, eh? participant-centered. Our job as the game master or the master is to guide them to make sure they, they understand what they need to do. 
Quest 4 involve preparing his assessment part 2 which is after determining the residual risk okay, whether it's high risk, medium risk or low risk then if during Quest 3, Quest 3 the hazard that they have identified have medium risk and above so they need to reduce risk so in order for this activity to work you need to ask the players to find only significant hazard hazard that can um, severely harm people and that is very have high consequences that can kill or that can cause fatality or massive damage yeah? why because it would be beneficial to discuss or analyze this kind of hazard for quest 3 quest 4 and quest 5 we don't want them to pick simple hazard or insignificant hazard okay like a like a hazard that can cause just a small cut and first aid injuries you know, we don't want that because it's not complex enough for them to be challenging it must be challenging the key word here is challenging so that they feel a sense of uh, <coughs> satisfaction when they can uh, solve a complex challenge so that is part of game equation is giving them challenge challenge that suits their level if they are for example older adults that have like 10 or 15 years of experience then it might you might need to adapt quest 2 uh, to identify hazard something that is more complex okay do not ask older adults who have 15 years of experience to find simple risk it's not challenging for them right? it's not exciting right give them something that is very challenging so quest 4 involves activities on thinking about additional control measures barriers or defenses to reduce risk to a lower level <clears throat> and the last quest would be for presentation uh, this is to um, improve the skills of the players to do presentation either in, um, in live face-to-face uh, -face presentation but during MCO maybe you need to change it to a video presentation it's not only to enhance uh, the communication and presentation skills of the player it also to repeat yeah? you will find that you need to put in the repetition uh, within quest 2 quest 3 quest 4 and quest 5 so a lot of it repeats uh, you talk about hazards in quest 2 quest 3 quest 4 quest 5, 5. you talk about risks in 3 4 5 we talk about control measures in three, four, five. So people remembers when they repeat things. Yeah, if you are doing things re repetitively every day, you you will master it in no time. Yeah? so that is another principles of learning uh, by repetition. <coughs> it's okay to repeat. Uh, that is a must for me. Repeat. Okay, repeat, 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 so that they can stick. Yeah, in the in the head eh, in the mind of the players now you have mission story you have quest <coughs> another thing that you have to set up uh, is the level and ranks eh? so this is something that can uh, further excite the player because they now have the ability to uh, becoming or getting a higher level uh, go into a higher level if like if if you are a soldier for example you start off with private you know it always motivates them to go a uh, uh, higher rank uh, to 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 accomplish or to get to achieve a higher rank because that is a symbol of status yeah it's like promotion promotion so within the gamification you also you need also to introduce promotion <clears throat> because when a player is able to accomplish a challenging problem you must reward them 
yeah? um, by giving them a higher rank okay or by giving them badges which i will talk later on <clears throat> so you can set up level set up level and ranks so this is part of the game mechanics that involves unlocking and ranks and levels each player start from level 0 you must be you must tell them that yeah? every everyone start at the same level and they can level up to the highest is level 5 with completion of each quest so this is an example in, in, in the table in the screen you can see an example where uh, this is what is, is expected from the players they need to complete quest 1 when they complete they will unlock quest 2 and with that they will level up from level 0 to level 1 and with that also they get the rank of noob in my class I I use safety noob eh, as the first rank <clears throat> and then when they complete quest 2 they will unlock the next quest quest 3 and they will level up another level level 2 and then they get higher rank apprentice safety apprentice for example and then when they complete quest 3 they will unlock the next quest quest 4 and level up yeah, and get a new rank for example safety sidekick there you can change this rank eh? this is an example that i use the rank you know it's up to you you can use any rank that is appropriate eh? appropriate <clears throat> and you start off with the rank of noob safety noob and you end with the highest rank which is safety superhero for example and that is the level of mastery yeah <clears throat> so this is very important to to give them a sense of accomplishment yeah, accomplishment and in a way give them competition yeah? because not everyone will level up this at the same time some who are more quicker than the other they level up much quicker so that gives a sense of competition and when they see their friend getting level up uh, much quicker than than him and that participant that player might be motivated uh, to accept the challenge okay oh you are already level one i'm not okay i'm gonna hurry up okay i'm gonna things and i'm gonna do things uh, much quicker now because you know at least i want to be at par with you or i want to beat you for example that gives a sense of competition we're gonna talk about leaderboards huh, after this okay and then you can set up badges yeah badges like a soldier when they go out for a parade you can see their uniform with all kinds of medals you know that is something that are, they are proud of okay and it is a sense it is something a symbol of achievement and when you have a lot of medals uh <clears throat> pinned on their uniforms it gives a message to the other people who are looking at it that they, he is an, an achiever eh? achieve a lot of things so badges is important in gamification you can call it badges you can give call it trophies uh, you can give it in a form of virtual you can give it in the form of physical it depends on your situation so in this context badges is a reward for leveling up yeah, to a higher rank or you can use it as a reward for other achievement uh, it depends on the design of your your gamification program yeah so I share with you some of the things that I did, the, some of the badges that I designed. I, you can either use uh, <coughs> uh, something that you can find in the internet. Eh? You can Google badges because there's a lot of, of uh, template out there. You just use any of it that you think is suitable. But for me, I, I like to be original, eh? original. So this is something that I created on my own. And when my students accomplish, accomplish a quest, they will get this. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, level 1, level 2, level, level 2, level 3, and level 4 batch. Together with the picture of a trophy and 
the rank that they get you are now level 2 safety novice yeah? you are now a safety apprentice you are now a safety cadet and these are the level up badges if you want to create some other badges for other achievement then it's good but uh, don't have too many badges or else you get confused which one to give it's, it, it just increase your admin work yeah? <clears throat> Okay, and then you can set up scores, uh, points. <clears throat> Before this, you might not give any marks, uh, unless if you give some kind of quiz or, or assessment at the end of your training program. That is, this is maybe something that is uh, strange to you, but as a trainer, as a, as a teacher, you need to have uh, a way to measure. Okay, a way to measure. <clears throat> so you need to have, in all games, they have points. Eh? If you go to an arcade game also, you can see you are given points. Eh? If you live long enough and kill a lot of baddies, for example, you, your points will be highest. Eh? If you just put in the coins and play for, uh, you just start playing and playing for one or two minutes, then, then you are, the game ends, then the points will be lower. Eh? So scores, points also something that reflects accomplishment. So you need to have that. Uh, to level up, players must demonstrate that they have understand the concept of risk assessment in each of the quests and be able to demonstrate they are able to do the process, the method or the technique for identifying hazard, for assessing the risk and how to reduce the risk that is very important and the scores uh, or point is additional elements eh, that can <coughs> uh, set up competition among the players so these are some of the suggestion of uh, points or scores that can use within the program for example <coughs> you can give points or scores when the participant you know if you have a, an online lecture for example they can turn on the video and you can watch them attending and listening to you for the whole duration get full marks or full points for those who are missing for example for the tested te first 10 minutes they are there and then later on they are missing they get lesser points so having this course might motivate people or the players to to be more because they know they get the scores and they, they can be at the level higher than the others yeah especially those who are competitive as like i said they must be motivated if they are not motivated they don't care they don't care you know high scores low score they don't care i need to do this uh, it's a waste of time they must have some kind of motivation <clears throat> For those who have attended, for those who complete uh, being uh, is <coughs> attending the lectures for the whole duration, give them full marks. For example, less than that, then less cost they get. Now, for quest two, three, four, and five, they need to come up with the week with the work a submission. So, if they send in submission early, that is this is something that you have to set the deadline. Okay, <coughs> give them full marks. A full score, yeah, 100 score, 1000 score, you, you, you decide. If they are late, then they get lesser scores, lesser points. This is consistent with the <coughs> you know, gaming concept. The better you are, the more scores you get. Yeah? The better, better means submit early. Yeah? Um, send perfect work the first time. Now, this is something that we want to motivate the players so that whenever they do the work, they do it, do it the right the first time. Eh? Do it right the first time. <clears throat> if you don't do this, they might, okay, we just do it, uh, you know. Um, you just do what we want to do and then send. And then you have to check. You have to check like six, seven times. <clears throat> so in order to motivate them to, to do the work, right for the first time give them scores 
Yeah. Send perfect work first time, you give them full point. Corrected work, reduce point. The more correction they need to do, the less scores. Yeah. Or prepare creative, unique presentation, you get full score. If the presentation is a lame one, a less score. If the presentation is just you talking, less a score. And so they are motivated to earn points or scores. So what do you use the scores for? The points for? <clears throat> it's for the competition. Those who have, who gain the highest score will be at the top. Okay? I will show you after this. So for those who are very competitive, they want to be number one, they will go for it. Yeah, they will go for it. But just watch out, you know, do, do, don't, don't let them use uh, cheating or, or threatening or whatever it is. Yeah? Do it in an ethical way. Yeah? Uh, so what is the scores for? It is for a leaderboard. Yeah? So leaderboard is also in a, in an important concept in uh, gamification. So there's an example of leaderboard. <clears throat> If you have a face-to-face -face classroom, physical classroom, you can prepare a notice board. <coughs> uh, you can ask the player to prepare their pictures, name and everything. And you collect it and put it on the notice board. And then you, you put in ranks and change the ranks accordingly to their scores. Okay. So as a game master, that is part of your administrative job to maintain scores. Yeah. <coughs> And make sure that you are doing it right lah. Huh? Don't cheat off or uh, create a mistake uh, that may, might create some issue lah. Huh? If it's online, you might have a, a way of like a portal whereby all the participants can visit and watch. Okay, where are they right now? Huh? <coughs> so that, that is an example. You can be creative about it. You can find other ways of um, showing uh, the leaderboards to all the players so that they know their ranks. It might give them extra motivation to rise up the rank. Uh, maybe they are at the lowest one and they think, hey, people are uh, talking about me being the last person in the leaderboard. Nah, I want to change, uh, for example. I hope that is something that we are hoping for. Uh, uh, the motivation, the engagement. Okay, I will do better next time for for the quest for example so that they can rise up the rank <coughs> and you can also set up currency yeah currency uh, players can have the options to collect coins yeah? in my in my gamification in in unimas for my students i have coins yeah? i have uh, this coin concept <coughs> and i call it safety coins how do they earn safety coins by doing extra quizzes yeah. i prepared like 10 extra quizzes and if they complete and score perfect marks for one quiz they get one safety coins yeah. so if they get these coins or currency what can do they do with it so <clears throat> that is up to the game master, the, the game master to decide uh, what is the coins for. Or you might want to, you know, to use the scores, the points that I, that I talked about before this and use it to change to coins also can. Uh, that, is, that is your creativity to find a way. Uh, eh? <clears throat> so when they earn coins, coins can be used to purchase a certain advantage from the game master. Eh? For example, in the way I do it with my students, when they uh, complete 10 quiz, for example, 10 quizzes, uh, full marks, they will get 10 safety coins. And I will tell them that, okay, I have uh, uh, a number of protection spells yeah, for, for sale. <coughs> for protection spells is are, are those advantages eh, that they can gain from the process, for example. Uh, if the quest, if they want a certain quest to be done in, in, uh, in a group, uh, in a team, not individual, they can use the safety coins to purchase their protection spells. 
and then using that spells they are not able to do that quest in a group for those who don't have any safety coins who don't earn any coins they have to do the quest individually so that is an advantage so they are motivated to do that extra quiz just to get the coins so that the coins they can use to to take advantage yeah? maybe to have uh, <coughs> you know to to be in a team so that they do lesser work for example that's uh, that's being uh, that's a strategy okay that's a strategy so in a way <coughs> this gamification will also encourage uh, the players to strategize yeah? so do i need to play the, the quiz if i get the quiz i get the safety coins can i use the uh, safety coins to 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 uh, for example to make my job a bit uh, easier for example to do it in a group uh, <coughs> there are a few protection spells uh, available uh, in, in my example uh, other than that you can change mode of presentation I change the mode of presentation for example if the presentation is recorded they want to do it live because they are comfortable with live presentation okay, you can you can use the safety coins to do that <coughs> so you can set up how players earn safety coins according to your creativity <coughs> for example players can have us coins if they do additional tasks like completing extra quiz <clears throat> or other things I don't know maybe you want the players to uh, if you do it physically for example in a, in a building or in a room uh, you can uh, hide easter eggs yeah, you can hide things somewhere around the building and you tell the players now if you find this easter egg at the place where I hide it and bring it to me and you can you will earn coins for example so that is something extra that is interesting for them to do eh? so while they are doing their rounds to find hazards at the same time they're okay can can is there any easter eggs here can you see that is that an easter egg yes easter egg so <coughs> maybe this is an easter egg so you take an easter egg and show it to the master say so, yeah you found that easter egg congratulations this is the safety coins that you have earned wow okay we can use that <coughs> yeah so it gives them an extra excitement and you can also have yeah, the option to set up characters and these are some of the uh, principles of games whereby you can choose especially <coughs> um, role playing games and eh? they can choose the roles they want to play if you are used to playing role playing game you can, can choose uh, being uh, an archer for example a warrior for example a mage for example so you use the same principle <coughs> uh, like in my example for my class i set up characters students or players can choose either to be a safety enough officer a hygiene technician a boiler man which is dealing with mechanical hazard or an ergonomist and <clears throat> all of these characters have their own um, characteristic eh? um, when i set the character for example if you choose to be an ergonomist the hazard that you have to find are all related to uh, biomechanical hazard that relates to ergonomics so it is something that is uh, consistent with the with the gamification that relates to the character uh, you can be creative about it. You can have a picture of the characters that, that players can choose from. You can give them a special name <coughs> and give them some kind of um, advantage. For example, if you choose this character, um, automatically you will gain level up, for example. But it has a disadvantage. But you will lose this. Uh, so... Players will be okay. They if they want to choose their character. Will be strategize. They will think about okay. If you want to choose this, uh, this uh, this advantage and this. Uh, so what we want to do is engage, being being actively involved, and thinking about it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the best way is to try to use 
things that relates to the the content of the training for this purpose is risk assessment. For example, if you choose this character, <coughs> okay, uh, it can bring about this kind of advantage, and but you will lose out this. This is something that is uh, normal that you can find in game. There are always advantage and disadvantage for each character, <coughs> so that the players we need to think about uh, about it before they choose uh, to strategize. And that is the basic game mechanics that I use in my course uh, to embed gamification. There are also others game mechanics and you can find it in the internet. And if you think that is suitable for your training program, then go ahead. Yeah, with all means, use it if it's suitable and appropriate for your <coughs> uh, audience. Yeah? Now, <coughs> for implementation, trainer must spend effort to prepare all the game mechanics. Like I said earlier, it requires a lot of effort from the trainer part. For me, I take a lot of time to think about the mission, uh, the quest. But if you are interested in <coughs> in doing this gamification, and there's an easy way whereby you can use how I do it. Uh, you don't have to think about everything new and apply it in your own uh, organization or in your own context. But if you want to do it on your own, that's good, that's fine. But make sure you, you put in a lot of time and an effort to think about <coughs> all the game mechanics before you conduct the training. Because a carefully prepared program will ensure success of the gamification effort. Okay, we don't want players to be <coughs> frustrated eh, because the game master also confused. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, what do you, uh, do you the, 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 the game master is not prepared. Or when they have some kind of issues or problem, it is not well thought about eh, before that. Oh yeah, uh, I I miss that. I I really didn't I didn't see that coming. For example, uh, suddenly you have a situation. Yeah? So make sure you think about all the things that you need to do first to ensure that the players are all mm, clear uh, of of what they need to do. Ensure the, to brief the players thoroughly to ensure they know what to expect but always be prepared for confused players. Eh? So this is something that you need to do. You need to brief the players about the rule of the game. And before you play the game, you need to know the rule of the game. Imagine if you play Monopoly and no one that sits... Uh, near the monopoly board knows how to play so it will be chaotic eh? everyone will, will argue with everyone else on how to play the game okay you have to set the rules you have to be clear of what is the rule of the game what is expected and what is <coughs> what is the things that they need to avoid eh? so that they don't become confused more importantly they they, they go they don't uh, argue with each other eh, about the rule of the game and you must must ensure that you are available for guidance eh? <coughs> because along the process there will be a lot of players who might forget they might be confused uh, <coughs> about the things that they have to do so you need to guide them because you are the game master you are the one who designed the game eh? And most importantly, make sure that the learning outcomes are achieved. That is most important. If you want them to learn about how to identify hazard properly, make sure when, when you test them, they are able to do it. And when you are satisfied, then they can, you can give and they can unlock the next quest. And give them the badges and level up their rank. <coughs> because that is the most important thing. Yeah, because they, you want them to learn about the process. You want, learn, you want them to learn about how to identify hazard, how to assess the risk, <coughs> and how to reduce the risk. 
And don't forget at the end of the the game when everyone, if you have a time limit, at the end of the time limit, you do a survey. Or if you want to wait until everyone have reached level 5 and when everyone have reached the level of mastery, you do some kind of survey <coughs> to ask for feedback, for further improvement. And ask whether how they feel. That is very important because <coughs> people why people are engaged with games because games give them different feelings yeah? at some time they will be angry sometimes they will be frustrated sometimes they will be happy sometimes they will be confused that's why people love games because of the <coughs> different of emotion involved in the process okay now after the survey if you find that a lot of participants don't have any <laughs> feeling you know same they're all the same so you need to do something about it. Eh? But if you find that peop- uh, participants are talking about their experiences whereby they are frustrated with their achievement, where they are elated or happy with what they are able to do, and if they feel that they are angry with the uh, level of uh, participation from their group members, uh, that, is, that is great. Eh? That is great because that indicates that the gamification design is working yeah because gamification evokes feeling emotion yeah so when you are emotionally attached to something then you are engaged yeah? you are engaged like when you are fighting with someone like you you really into it yeah? oh, angry so because it involves emotion yeah? intense emotion so you need to find to get feedback from the participant but above all <coughs> make sure you have fun yeah? uh, if you find that all the things that you have to do puts pressure uh, into into you yeah? puts puts you in the place of pressure you you feel uh, yeah, not motivated you feel unhappy you don't see it as fun don't do it yeah? Only when you feel <coughs> happy doing it and you want to be part of it and you can have a little bit of fun along through the process, then do it. And then that, that will be worth it for you. Okay, that is my advice. So thank you very much for <coughs> the time you spend to listen to my sharing. Again, if you have a LinkedIn account, don't forget to follow me. And if you have... Uh, you always watch YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And hope to see you again the next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.